to another app guys steve from stabjet today's app something different on the channel so um if you're new to the channel please give it a like and subscribe we'll do some more content on this car um this is my brother's car actually so um i'm helping him and i thought we'll make a video of it um for you diyers out there doing the helltech elite pro plug-in on this with the wideband sensor and we're setting up engine protection so we've got fuel pressure and oil pressure sensors so we'll be going through the entire wiring setting it all up and um, getting a base map so up and running so that way you can install the Heltec wideband sensors and then drive it to your tuner to uh, finish off so one of the main points of going an aftermarket ECU is engine protection so with that right um we've got two pressure sensors uh 150 psi or 100 psi sensors now this is running two pierberg external pumps there there is going to be a limit along with the pressure sensors is also all the safety features within the Haltech and within the um engine protection calibrations um, we're going to run through that as well um, that will go through on when we're setting up the base map if you're already up to in, install the Heltec and you just want to have a look at like the base map and setting up engine protections then um, you can squeeze through at the moment um, we're just going to be the DIY so I'm just going to take you through installing the Heltec installing the sensors so fuel pressure oil pressure um, linking up the wideband kit to the Heltec and we're also gonna add in the fuel, uh, second fuel pump. So we're gonna wire that up to the Heltec um, and we'll stage the second pump to come on. So that'll be set up in the Heltec. We are going to add in the flex fuel. So this has got a flex fuel kit on it. We're gonna wire that into the ECU. We're gonna set up a uh, fuel pressure, oil pressure block over here somewhere. And uh, that way we can set up some gauges as well um, and all the wiring harness of the Haltech will be um, nicely integrated. Two sensors, boom, in there, and then we'll run some lines to the sensor block. So let's have a look. We've got the Pro plug-in, so auxiliary. That is where we're going to be pinning out the wideband, the two sensors, the flex fuel, and the fuel pump we're staging the second pump All right, so that's enough talking let's now get stuck into it start off with taking out the ecu so we'll um, take that out and then we'll go ahead and mount up the what do we call it sensor sensor port i don't know sensor block that's it we're going to mount up the sensor block here all right, so you're gonna see one, two, three. Um, these are one of those where bolts or whatever you call them, they the head breaks off once they're tightened up. It's a little bit like ignition barrel where you will tighten the bolt or nut up and then the heads break off when they're up to torque. All right, so we'll drill them out. I should have used a hacksaw blade to just slot some holes, but anyways, I've drilled them and I've, I've got them out. So, um, uh, now we will disconnect the battery and then we'll pull out the uh, connectors. those two tabs and yeah that's it all done Have a look at the size difference huh all right and there's an additional connector there do we know what that's for 
That'll probably be to do the O2s, the auxiliary one. Nah, so that's the auxiliary. Oh. Alright. Oh well, interesting. There's an extra uh, connector there. Not sure. vacuum and we'll vacuum out so um you uh, may not follow the same suitors or same route as we're going but um this is what we're doing it's going to be something like we'll mount it somewhere there now and then with that auxiliary connector to there we'll be able to just run another sensor wiring over to there and something like that then we'll be able to put some gauges on them if you wanted to so that way you can measure them up how it looks with the Heltec and mechanically how it looks as well so uh, we'll be taking this gauge off uh, a line to here and then um, so a line underneath the lines will be coming from underneath um, and then we can have or we can block these off we'll see we'll see how we go anyway all right so a little bit of uh, the white Teflon paste on any of the NPT fittings not on the AN fittings so and you just nip these fittings up don't go swinging a breaker bar off it. Done. Done. That's it. And that's a that's a good angle as well. It goes with the uh, guard. I like it. Looks good. Alright, that's that. Um, now, uh, we're going to make up the lines. Uh, we'll make up the lines now. Let's do it. Alright, so, Chris. You know what your job is? Tell me. Your job is to clean that up now. That sounds good. Alright, so where we're up to, um, up to cutting the lines now. So uh, we got some um, Dash 4 uh, Teflon lines. So this is the Speedflow 200 series. Um, now there is a tool, okay, um, to cut the uh, Teflon lines and the braided lines. We're going to do it the uh, Handyman DIY and use a grinder. All right. Why did you tape it up? Why did I tape it up? So when you why you tape it up um, is when you go to cut it, the strands they um, they uh, j just like a, any type of braid. They they uh, what's braid. it called? That's it. That's one cut, and you can see there, yeah, how it's opened up and. Alright. So now what we're gonna do? We'll get the air compressor set up and we'll blow it out. First things first. Once you've cut it, because this was the end that I used for the grinder, so I'm just gonna use this one now for this fitting. So I use a screwdriver. Once you've cut it, then the task of you need to then open it up and uh, actually fray it out a bit all right and the reason why is when we open this up you've got that olive that olive is what actually crimps the teflon liner onto that little dick all right 
All right, so when we're assembling the fittings up, some WD-40 or some silicon spray, and just spray it around the liner. All right, that there. Spray, I usually spray a little bit in there. Now, before you even go ahead with this, you wanna make sure that that dick is gonna go in there, because when you cut these, sometimes the Teflon in the inside, see that, that that's tight. Yeah, so let's spray this up. We need to make sure that this is going to go in nice and smooth. Otherwise, oh, so much better. All right, sweet. I'm happy with that. All right, you might have um, some like uh, little ends off the plastic that come in, and that's why you can clean it out with a burring tool or give it a bit of a with. Um, one of them but now that goes in smooth so I'm happy with that so now we'll spray it up again All right. and we'll put the olive over the top there now watch your bloody fingers when you do this all right so that's on and then on your worst Then you want to see the inner Teflon right around the end inside this olive there's a lip and that Teflon has to be around that lip fully edge to edge when you turn this around all right as you can see if you can see I don't know if it's blurry but that's perfect all right so I'm happy with that I'll just give it a bit of a Oh. So, um, when you're up to this bit, right, um, if you've already done this end, so if you've already crimped this end, then you want this to go over the top before you start this, all right? But in this case here, we haven't done the other end, so put that over there. All right, so a little bit of lube along the threads as well. And again in there. Actually, I'll put some on these threads as well. Now, I'm going overboard with this, but... So, yeah, I've got the um, speed flow tool for this. You don't need this. You can just get two of two shifters or two AN spanners, however you want to do them. Um, these are killer, actually, before I even do this. This here, killer, um, from Bunnings in the plumber's aisle. They're really thin, they can get everything. I use these for AN fittings all the time. Um, I think they're about 25 bucks, but it um, pays to have uh, a couple of sets of these in your toolbox. That's it. That's uh, one side done. So that's how you make up. So that's how you make up Teflon lines. There we go. Beautiful. So that's the T-piece fitting and this will screw into the sensor block on the block and then this will go like that and then it's going to go up to the pressure sensor. Alright, we'll leave that here for now and we'll mount this in. Alright, we had that marked up and then we run that something like that. And then I've just marked it where that point is right there where it meets. That's the oil pressure, fuel pressure looks killer. 
Yeah, so this is the oil pressure bar. Electrical tape. And then we'll we'll give it a bit more length for this one. Won't hurt. When you're up to this stage, you don't want to fully tighten these now, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to lock this onto the um, block side and then we're going to screw this on so that way we can still swivel the fitting. See, you can see I'm still swiveling the fitting around, right? Once we've swiveled it into the place that we want it, then we take it off and then we lock it down. So how are we looking? All right, so we'll swivel a little bit like that. All right, so there we go. I've done now that angle that we're gonna want. Now we take it off. Now you can use two spanners if you want, two shifters, and do it right now, tighten it up, and then it's done, but I'm gonna do it in the device. All right. So there you have it, braided line, fittings all done, and um, yeah, so we'll go on that side, straight on that side.